can the motorcycle industry stop Russia with this invasion of Ukraine? Revelator L. Hello, welcome to Revelator Elf. So a horrible situation uh, in the Ukraine right now. Only yesterday, uh, the Russians launched an attack uh, on a nuclear power plant. Uh, luckily, and it was by luck, I believe, uh, that... Um, it didn't affect the uh, reactor at all and radiation levels, uh, but this just goes to show how out of hand uh, this situation is 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 getting. Uh, and obviously, uh, the uh, the human life and the uh, effect on the civilians and infrastructure and buildings is just terrible. Anyway, war is war. It's horrible. That's my point on it. However, this video uh, is about the sanctions, really, that the global. Uh, countries collectively and the global economy let's say is putting on russia to try and force them to rethink their ways uh, in this way and i just wondered what effects they would be and let's say some of the motorcycle companies uh what effects they could have uh in trying to turn the thinking um let, let's just get into this a little bit in detail just to give you some background basically the russian motorcycle market in itself is is a very poor market it was basically on its knees uh for 10 years or so hardly any imports at all uh, it, it exports some motorcycles around the world but it's basically uh, 10 to 1 outnumbered now by imports so uh, I think it's got an export market in the region of about 20 million US dollars but it's got an import uh, market of about $200 million. Now, obviously, these numbers might change, and I'm just taking 2019, 2020 figures, but obviously these numbers could change. Now, the biggest import uh, motorcycles come from China uh, from uh, for Russia. And also, uh, Russia does produce some Chinese motorcycles as well. I think Lifan as well that, uh, that they produce. But the overwhelming majority are Chinese. They've also got a big Japanese market. Now, the situation with the Chinese motorcycle manufacturers, they really stopped doing that as well. So it's a it's a constantly changing situation in Russia itself in terms of motorcycles. Uh, there are a few noticeable brands that say do uh, export to uh, Russia let's say uh, BMW for example and Harley Davidson so here's the interesting thing now Harley Davidson the other day said that they're suspending operations or suspending exports to uh, to Russia I actually did my sums here and that equates to in the region of about 10 million dollars uh, to Harley Davidson that's 10 million um, the United States uh, share let's say that's going to uh, Russia in terms of imports is the value is about 10 million dollars which isn't a great deal of money when you think about it especially in terms of profit uh, for Harley Davidson and also, it's not going to make a huge amount of difference at all, if uh, if any, really, to uh, the Russia, the Russian people, let's say, because this is uh, this is for those who can afford it, let's say, in Russia. Russia are going to be facing hard times, or the people are going to be facing hard times as well. So I don't think this is going to have any effect at all. Interestingly, uh, uh, yesterday as well, Lex Moto, Chinese uh, motorcycle distributor here in the UK, they said that they would donate five pounds for every motorcycle that is uh, that is sold uh, in the month of March uh, to the British Red Cross effort uh, in Ukraine as well. Um, so I, I quickly did my sums here, and only going from last March uh, 2021 sales figures. Uh, I believe they sold what was it uh, 488 uh, motorcycles so just quickly doing my sums here so that's uh, 488 bikes uh, equates to 2,440 pounds uh, worth of donations which isn't a great deal of money I mean yes uh, even if you go up to you know you double that or triple that you know you're talking 10 15,000 I, I know it's 
you know every little helps of course and from a motorcycle manufacturer you would think one well, or you would think that maybe they should offer a little bit more the thing is you know when we're talking about motorcycle impact on russia it, it's a very small market in terms of uh, global uh, trade sales the bulk of it has come from china in the recent years and now the bulk of it is from uh, japan i think the most of it is about a 60 percent uh, market share as well some japanese uh, automotive manufacturers have said they will stop uh trading with uh, russia right now motorcycle manufacturers have not indicated that as yet uh, but we'll have to see how that goes as well. Obviously, China are, are trying to stay independent as well, but the, the trade routes are still open. India uh, are still trading uh, with uh, Russia, I believe, and also their motorcycle manufacturers, I believe, like Bajaj, are still trading there as well. They've increased their market share in Russia. But again, it's still a relatively small uh, industry right now, So, but it's still outweighs their imports outweigh their exports by about 10 to 1. The influence is going to be minimal at best. Individual people uh, in Russia, if they are into motorcycles or they use them as a mode of transport, I think they're not really going to be interested in buying new motorcycles now, uh, unless out of necessity, but I think they're just going to make do with what they've got. The impact of these sanctions on Russia or certainly on uh, the government uh, to change their ways, I don't think it's going to have any impact at all. Certainly not immediately and maybe not even long term. What it will impact possibly is the, is the manufacturers themselves trying to gain revenue from these exports to uh, Russia. But again, we're talking long term here. Let's say uh, Harley Davidson, for example, say it's only $10 million uh, deal, really. Well, you know, that's over a whole year. I'm, you know, we don't know what's going to happen in the future. Hopefully this, uh, this war will end very, very quickly. But it, it's a very scary situation out there for everybody. And I'm sure you can agree there. But I thought I just want to run through a few numbers with you there uh, to, to show you that um, there is a motorcycle industry, that there is a, a there is a part to play from the motorcycle industry uh, in terms of the economic sanctions uh, against Russia. But it's going to be a very, very small market, a very small market share. For many, many years uh, in Russia, motorcycles were hardly used at all. Uh, their domestic uh, market, well, basically fell on its knees. Uh, and also around neighboring countries, there are more motorcycles being used uh, in those countries. That is uh, for sure. And certainly of the smaller displacement engines as well. But the bulk of those are either the Chinese or Japanese as well uh, and it really comes down to what people can afford uh, in those uh, in those regions it's only the the rich the, the more affluent who can afford the new prestige brands let's say like BMW Ducati Harley Davidson um, most people are either buying used bikes uh, exported bikes you know used exported bikes uh, from this country let's say all around europe uh, to uh, to russia there was actually a big market in this country for illegal motorcycles uh, going over to russia many years ago and also there's a big trade and unfortunately of stolen motorcycles that would go over to russia as well so you know there is a market there but how much influence? Hardly anything at all. All we can do is pray that this uh, horrible war uh, in Ukraine just ends as soon as possible and, uh, well, that people can start to recover from this because it's just been an absolute horror show and it continues to be com to be that way there's always there's always extra information that we're not privy to and the russian people i'm sure are not privy to all the information uh, and they're only being fed what they're being fed by the uh, the official news agencies as well we're only seeing one side of it as well i'm sure uh, but you know somewhere in between you cannot ignore what is going on actually in ukraine itself and and the worrying thing yesterday was that nuclear plant that was hit and you think, what the hell are they thinking? What are they thinking? And what can we do as the as the rest of the world, you know, to stop this from happening? And, you know, everybody talks about sanctions, let's say, 
I'm not even sure if, if sanctions are going to do anything, certainly not in the short term. And when nuclear power plants are being hit and targeted as well, that's when this is a real wake up call, not only in terms of the localized national struggle uh, war going on in Ukraine but also the the rest of the world as well this was for me it was a, a real uh, eye opener first thing uh, and um you know, and I, I just got to thinking, well, what is going on? You know, you've got the likes of MV Augusta uh, owner, CEO, who's a Russian, uh, Timur Sadorov, I believe, uh, a couple of days ago, who came out and was uh, very vocal in his uh, in his dissension against the Russian government as well. At his own his own risk as well. We've got these oligarchs all over uh, the world who are either denying or not commenting on what's going on and the, they're having their assets fro frozen and they're not happy about that but they're in league let's say with the, the, the this russian government whether they agree with it or not you know it's all part of it i didn't want to make this a video political at all but you just cannot you cannot uh, ignore what is going on in the world and you know this is a motorcycle channel and i wanted to kind of relate it to motorcycles of course but, you know, you, you just can't ignore what's going on in Ukraine and the devastation being caused and the the loss of life, for, you know, loss of a way of life and the, the mass movement of people just trying to flee. It's a terrible thing. And this is being caused by an invading force when they didn't need to do that. You know, they could have made their own case to, let's say, the UN, to the world media to say, look, this is a situation that's going on in Ukraine that we feel that should not be happening or there, what they feel is uh, about NATO and Europe uh, influence on Ukraine. They could have made those feelings known. They didn't have to invade and cause this uh, loss of life. And it's outrageous, really. But there we go. That's uh, the way I feel about it. You know, I'm not looking for comments. I'm not looking for views on this. I just sort of wanted to make this video. And just to say that, you know, the the influence that uh, certainly from the motorcycle sector, the motorcycle automotive sector, I don't think it's going to have any impact whatsoever. Certainly uh, in the short term, maybe in a very long term, but that's not going to change anything. That's going to be no sense of um, solace, let's say, to those uh, those people in Ukraine at all. Uh, even the oligarchs who are having all their assets frozen in, in Western countries, I don't think that's going to make any difference whatsoever, really. Uh, you know, what, what is the alternative? I don't know. I am no military tactician. I, I'm no political analyst either. Uh, all I can say is, you know, I think a lot of people are feeling lost and worried uh, about this whole situation and heart goes out to all those people in ukraine as well uh, and everybody else caught up in this as well everybody else caught up in this and uh, you know and it, let's not forget and i truly believe this that governments say they act in our best interests but I don't believe they do. So let's not just start having a go at the Russian people uh, either, because I'm sure many of them are basically saying not in our name as well. And uh, just like, you know, we've had conflicts for, from our side as well. Um, and many people would say not in our name as well. So, you know, let's all bear that in mind. People all around the world effectively just want to live in peace. It's only individuals or governments at the time that cause havoc and um, hopefully sense will prevail. Stay safe out there. Cheers.